Mrs. Gibson, Timmy Alpit, Emmanuel yeah. Samoa. Our quote for the day is from an American sports executive, Nolan Rea, and it says, Enjoying success requires the ability to adapt. Only by being open to change will you have a true opportunity to get the most from your talent. Interesting quote. Very interesting. Man. Change, they say, is inevitable. Well, coming up in the next one are Elections Observation Network presents a presentation on gender inclusion and women's participation in the 2023 general elections. The National Revenue Authority urges taxpayers to comply with NRA's tax regime. And we shall be finding out more about the Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovation, DSTI, in this edition of the program. These issues are all lined up for you. We invite your participation by sending your text to the number plus 232-7851-6244. You can also find us on Facebook at SNBC Channel 31 and other social media handles. It's good to join in Sierra Stay with us. Now to our first issue. Director of the Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovation is the ultimate goal of the National Innovation and Digital Strategy to guide national transformation through science, technology and innovation research, capacity development. It is a government agency in Sierra Leone that aims to leverage technology to improve the lives of Sierra Leoneans. The STI works on various projects such as developing national identification system and many more. Well, to tell us more about the DSTI, we have on the studios Abdul Malik Tijamsi, Director of the Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovation. DSTI, good morning and welcome to our show. Good morning and thank you for having me and uh, good morning to hear us. Yes, so can we know about the operations of DSTI? Um, well, the scope and the operation of DSTI is kind of broad because um, DSTI showed uh, the transformation of tech and innovation in Sierra Leone. As you are aware, it was a proclamation made by His Excellency, the President Julius Madabio in 2018. And then the now Chief Minister also sits as a Chief Innovative Officer, also played a tremendous role in the setup of DSTI. So, DSTI sits as an arm of the President's Office, where in charge of the implementation of tech um, infrastructures for ministries and agencies and departments. That's the role of the SDI in the country. And also, we also see it as an enabling tool for Sierra Leoneans in building the tech ecosystem. So, what have been some of your interventions to well, drive this goal of the president? Well, since the setup of the SDA, we have seen how we have been working on first, we can say the first period of setup of the SDA was also a learning curve for Sierra Leoneans and, and then the government as well. Um, Sierra Leone, we were not that into technology before 2018. And then President Biel sees that as a vision and then we could tell that our CIO um, Chief Minister. And we have learned a lot of lessons and then I see now people of Sierra Leone are really into technology. So some of our interventions like um, the Resolve Checker, which was a great tool for that drive Sierra Leone get the scale, we have the shape of scratch card. So we all check out. We also currently um, piloting a pregnancy tool to assist the Ministry of Health and doctors to track pregnant women in their, their um, trimester cycle. Also, we have tools like the IGIS uh, portal, which is a, a data tool. There are a lot of intervention that has gone through DSDI, and but I think some of the challenges, like there was no tech body that seeks that create policies. Mm -hmm. But now we have the Ministry of Communication, to, um, Tech and Innovation that is in charge of implementing policies while DSTI do the tech and the technical stuff of things. And also DSTI also sees us an enabler in terms of getting people in communication with people, transferring of skills like our learning ops in various universities around the country. When we talk about innovation, digital transformation, most people will say Sierra Leone is not up to that level. We are not digitally savvy, technologically savvy. So what's your assessment? 
I think people will say what they really don't know if you're not on the field, you won't understand it's like playing soccer. If you actually not in the field playing with the team, you will say the ball, I think it's supposed to be a goal, but you're not in that man's position. You don't know how he kicked the ball, what the stamina, the strength, and physical fitness in terms of making that ball a goal or kick a penalty and score because it's all about mental and decisions. So I think if you're not on the field, you won't know that tech, um, Sierra Leone is a tech savvy country. You will not understand the innovators, you don't understand the growth of the ecosystem. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm very proud of Sierra Leone, um, what we're doing, especially people like. Maybe one of the indicators could be the infrastructure. No. I think um, with the STI seat, we have to create an enabling society for innovators to build tools. And then this has to be every Sierra Leonean's job. And then we have to, I think what we need to do is mainly where the STI seat is to give people the skills. Because without the skill, we wouldn't have the infrastructure. Yeah, there was no infrastructure for WhatsApp when it came out. But when the invention was good, everyone went out to get a WhatsApp phone. Now if you ask everyone, we need a WhatsApp phone because they see the tool is out there. People don't know what they need to do, give it to them. And once they have it, they'll make means. Like, we have seen, develop, I've just met a young innovator that developed a projector in Sierra Leone with trash cans. So I think if we have the skills, we have the knowledge, and then the infrastructure will be out there because people have the skills. Because you, make, you use what you have to get what you want. So that's how the infrastructure will come in. So the inf infrastructure has nothing to do with us not being tech ready. We are tech ready, I think we just need the skill. Well, now, well, um, six years on since President Bill established DSTI, we have seen different innovators, Sianonians, they who come to our TV and, and stations to show what they have. How have you been able to coordinate these different innovators and bring tangibles to the people of Sianonians that indeed this is what we've done to coordinate these guys? Well, I think, so innovate is one thing, but if your innovation is solving problems, it's another thing. We all can innovate, but can your innovation solve society's problem? So what we're currently doing is we're getting all the innovators and then we have to match them with the entrepreneurial skill set to scale it. You can innovate one thing, but you also need a VC to fund your project so you can scale it. So it has to be commercialized, it has to make sense, it's solving problems for you to attract funders to fund your project. So we currently at DSTI, we're setting up something where we're looking for innovators who bring them to DSTI. We'll look at their product, create hackathons, look at their product, how good is your product? Can we scale it? Can it solve problems that Sierra Leone are facing that we can use tech? So we, for one, we have a, uh, a group called Team Lauren. Um, they create a very good product called Easy Stem Server. This is a server that way you can upload stuff and then you can download it using offline off without any data, you need internet connections. You, as long as you have connection with the IP, you can download. So what we do, we, we got them, units of common board, we got VCs, we have people that are coming into the country to mentor them, give them the skills, the understanding of entrepreneurship. Because you can be an innovator, but if you're not entrepreneur, you cannot connect the dot, and these two manage. So what we do, we bring them on board, if you know that you give us a solution that is good to help you, because we don't want to fund something that is not going to benefit the people of Sierra Leone. We want to fund something, we want to create you, that link between you and our partners, we know that you solve the problem, the vision of the person, the vision of the country, and then so the average man can understand and get the benefit of technology. Now, when you talk about solving problems in Zero, different innovators at different time, they have they have different things that they do. And we know when you talk about innovation, it's just adding knowledge to what already exists. So if you say someone is innovating something and does not solve the problem, I want you to clear that area for okay. someone out there who is an innovator. So, okay, so you have tech that is ahead of time that you can innovate, and then you have tech that means time. So when you develop tech that means time, then you solve problems. But if you develop tech that's ahead of time, then you're not solving problems. So if I come to Sierra Leone and start building robots, we don't really need robots in Sierra Leone at the moment. It's an innovation, it's good. But do we need robots? No. What we do we need at the moment is for us to build a centralized system that you can go to the police station, be able to get fingerprints of criminals. You can go to the bank, you can make easy payments. These are what we need. If you can develop solutions like that, you solve a problem like orange money, was a tech in time, he solves problem. Before you answer money, you go up and it was a tremendous problem. Probably you have to go to the bank to treat it. But orange money invented orange money, that's tech in time. So I think when it comes to innovation, what problem are you solving immediately? Sadly, we're not ready for self-drive cars. If you're going to invent a self-drive car, who's going to fund it? Where are you going to use it? 
So it's going to be, you have to have the balance where your solutions meet the market. So it's just about demand and supply. Yeah, some of the enablers could be, you know, power supply, uh, internet speed, connectivity. What's your thoughts? Well, enablery in which sense? With some of the enablers to for, for more innovators, mm -hmm. me, um, will be the power supply. Well, then that's where innovation comes in. You look around your problems and then you solve them. Like, I, and again, another innovator who is power generated with water, that's innovation. It meets time. We're in need of that. So we have to look at what are you solving at particular moment. So enabler in the sense, um, the power energy could be a good enabler. Internet, connectivity, data, cheap data. If you can innovate something to get CILs or to buy data, that's a good innovation. Connect directly from ISP. But how are you going to do it? There's a lot of challenges. So but now let's look at things that are realistic. Let's innovate them. Let's solve the problems that we're facing in Sierra Leone. Think about something that your community is facing every day, and then let's put the idea together and develop it. So how do you how do you map out or how do you fish out those innovators that do things that match the time? So it's all about um, we have our lining ups where we're going to be doing more training into innovators, um, training them how you do um, designing of project and time, and also we're going to start a workshop where we'll be looking doing hackathons. So based on this hackathon, we through this through this hackathon, we can discuss, explain to them um, the advantages and everything and how you can develop things. I realize we are dismissing AI. Dismissing AI, AI from artificial where? intelligence, you know, the robots. That's the way to go now. No, no, who was dismissing it? When you say uh, uh, robots, no, we don't need uh, uh, No, I think you got me wrong what I meant. I said you cannot innovate something that is ahead of time that not solving the problem. At the moment. At the moment. Okay. Well, he is Abdul Malik Tijansi, Director of Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovations, DSTI, talking about the operations. Yes, Emmanuel. Yes, to another issue, commercial motorists and passengers plying the Kisi Bypass Road in the east of Freetown have complained about the appalling traffic congestion along the road. Baibuwe Road, which is the main road in the east, is only accessible to the worker fine buses following a directive by the Ministry of Transport. Since Monday, when the new buses commenced service along the main roads in Freetown, the remaining routes have seen a huge concentration of public transport vehicles leading to sluggish traffic log jams. In the studio, we have Chen Jalo, the director of the Urban Resilient Mobility Project at the Ministry of Transport. Good morning and welcome to our program. Yeah, good morning. Well, now you, you, you just completed your three days test of these worker fine buses, and there have been many concerns from citizens. One has to do with traffic congestion, and another citizens from, if you watch a different program, citizens have been calling on authorities to allow the other uh, transport to apply the routes. So what have been your, 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 your stance as at this time? Um, good morning, listeners, again. I think uh, as a ministry, uh, the objective of this project is to decongest the city. So, um, as always, we have been doing, um, our main objective is to move more people than moving more, pe more vehicles. Uh, that's why we, we are encouraging the high capacity uh, buses to be moving uh, within the, uh, in the bigger cities. So, um, the, if you look around, there are a lot of congestion in the city. So, but if you move a bus that can take a capacity of 70 passengers, you are reducing the number of 70 private vehicles on the road. So that will decongest the city. You know, for every activity or for every change or reform, there's going to be a challenge. This is an initial uh, stage. Uh, that's why we said, okay, since this system is going to be new, let us give three days a test run. We are in, we can learn lessons, and uh, at the end of the day, we can 
use those lessons and correct some of our mistakes. We have recorded a lot of concerns. Uh, that's why in the ministry, we open a situation room. We are in after every operation, uh, including the minister and key staff will sit in the ministry and do all our analysis and take note of them. But what we are encouraging the, the people of Freetown and Sierra Leone is that uh, <coughs> we know change is uh, difficult when it comes. But let us give time and see how this change will impact. We are also in this thing, uh, uh, ministry. We cannot take actions that will hinder the progress of the entire uh, uh, citizens. But let us see and now evaluate which one is the, the, the better option. They will go back to the drawing board and see and come back and say, okay, we have looked at what the, the, the concerns of people and we, we realize that this is the way to go. But we have noted, we are, we are taking data, taking a lot of information to solve the problem of uh, Freetown. From the response from citizens out there, they are happy with the bosses, the worker fine bosses. But the concern is that the bosses, the 50 bosses, could not take all of the people at the same time. And you have so many people stranded when it comes to transportation to take them to their offices on time. Yes, uh, we know the 50 bosses are not enough. And uh, that's why we even phased out operations. The initial plan was we start from Jue, you go to the CBD, then you start from number two river up to the CBD. But uh, because we need more than 200 buses to cover that length, that's why we decided to phase out. Uh, we started with uh, the Lomley to the CBD in the west, then Calvert to the CBD in the east. But with that, we have um, 50 buses that we procured, but we have, um, for now, we have eight buses that are not operating. The reason is, um, during the pre-shipment, before the buses were shipped to Freetown, one of the buses, when they were loading the buses uh, in, in the ship, one of the buses got an accident. So that one, we asked them to fix it before ever they bring it to Freetown, which is coming in March. Okay, then we have, when the buses were in the, in the ship, we have seven of them that got a windscreen problem. They are currently parked at the Cockery. If you go there, you will see them. But uh, we asked them that because what we did in the contract is we, you, you have to get after delivery service. So you will not just procure the buses and you come and deliver to us. No. If there is any problem, you go back and fix it before you hand it over to us. So we ask them, go back and uh, bring these screens and uh, you, you fix them. Because we have spare parts for the buses, but the screens are not among those spare parts. You know, uh, uh, screens are very delicate. And uh, the, the supplier even wanted to uh, yeah, fix those um, uh, screens. But uh, there was a challenge with the, 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 the size of the screen for, be, uh, for that one to be yeah, fritted. So they have to ship it and it's going to take some time. But when those seven buses, including the one that is in India now, so eight buses add on to these other ones that are there, we have the 50 buses complete, I think it will ease the movement. Because our plan is we want to satisfy Calvertown to Lomley, then we expand because we want to run based on predetermined time and the buses will be running whether you have one passenger, whether there is no passenger in the bus because they have given them the time they have to run. So this particular resident urban mobility project, it, it's one of the things that gave the, the transformation to the authority and I know this work of five buses must have been handed over to a private contractor who is handling the buses. So the debate says that if the buses have been handed over to a private contractor and then government or the Ministry of Transport is restricting other commercial vehicles from plying the main roads, is that you are giving undue advantage to the private contractor and not allowing all other vehicles to ply alongside worker kind buses. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this is for the nation. Uh, what we did, uh, we did not just procure the buses and we say, okay, we are going to advertise and people compete and come and the winner will take the bus. If we do that, 
uh, international firms will come in and they will take on the ownership of this private company and they will operate wherein our people will not benefit anything. So what we did is to bring these people together. For the past four years, we, we bring the, the, the driver's union, the keke riders, the poda poda and bus owners, the motorbikes. We bring them passenger welfare. We, we brought them all together. We said, come and form companies. We wanted even more than one company because we are targeted to operate from uh, number two river. We said, form these companies so that you will own these companies. At the same time, you'll be operating your private vehicle, your private uh, or your commercial individual vehicle. At the same time, you are operating these buses. So they came together, they formed companies, and they are all shareholders into this single company. So what is going to happen? They will be operating the buses, whilst they are also operating their private vehicles in another route. That's why they are given other alternative routes to be operating these their vehicles until they phase out those vehicles. Because what we are going to do, is not good for us to say, okay, what we have been used to, we are going to continue to be like that. We need a change. And wherever you go, any world you go, or any country you go in the world, all developed countries, their transport system is modernized. If you want a developed city, your transport system, you have to, uh, to fix it. And the only way to fix it is to use mass transit system. So uh, this is not a disadvantage to them. They own this company that is operating. It is their so, own. So you want to confirm to the citizens of this country that the drivers that are now crying are part of they this are, worker fire. The operators are stakeholders operators. from the transport industry. Yes. They own this company. They own everything on the operations. So even the fear that we're having concerns came from them. You know, uh, in this part of the world, or let us say in Sierra Leone, mostly, I, I would say this, mostly people like to work for them, just for themselves as an individual. They, they think that uh, for a benefit, I want to benefit alone. They will not think for the general public. Um, you know, operations of these buses is going to cater for the entire population of Freetown. The time you you save in traveling from one point to the other is very, very important in terms of development. So using your individual poda poda, if you are used to using an individual vehicle and operate yourself, I think that's not the way to go. That's why we have encouraged them to be part of the company and they are all shareholders of this company. They can still have this their individual private uh, commercial vehicle and they will be operating that in alternative routes. But mind you what you have to note, some of these vehicles are causing a lot of danger in our health system. But well, what we don't know, because it's not directly impacting us, we think it is not an effect. The carbon monoxide that those vehicles are producing in this city is causing even most of the death that we are having. We need to discourage those things. You think why we are looking at uh, other uh, in developed world, we are saying people are having uh, a life expectancy of 100 years because they are controlling the carbon monoxide that are emitted in the cities. But because we don't know, it is not affecting you directly, it is affecting you indirectly, you think there is no effect. But we have to control the way we, 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 we use our vehicles. Those are very dangerous in our system. Even when you enter some of these vehicles, you just sit because there is no alternative. But they are very dangerous. Okay, continue to stay with us. Engineer Chen Mojano from the Ministry of Transport. When we go for a short break, when we come back, we continue with more issues. As the mother of the house, whenever I want to prepare power, it's good morning, Sierra Leone. Now to another issue dealing with education. The National Council for Technical Vocational and Other Academic Awards, NCTV, has completed the accreditation process of Bane Institute of Management Science and Technology and has presented the certificate of recognition to the institution for them to offer diploma and national technical certificate programs. When in the studio to talk about this certification, is the personal proprietor of the institution. Good morning, 
Yes, good morning, my dear. So, morning, what does mm. this certification mean for Bane Institute? Yes, um, Bane Institute, I just want to believe that we have been crying for accreditation for over 15 years, which I believe we write the nurses board. And uh, when I started this project, it was really struggle. I faced a lot of struggle, you know, because, uh, you know, starting the project as a Sierra Leonean and without the support of government, without the support from any NGO, I start by myself through the grace of God. And uh, I find it difficult in many ways, like being lecturers, I was facing a lot of constraints. But through the grace of God, I really crossed the battle, and I want to appreciate the NCTBA by calling upon them for the accreditation of my institute, which they fulfill on the 30th of January 2024. And uh, my aim and plan is to go further not only on certificate matters or diploma, but I want to fly onto degree level. So what are some of the causes that your institute offer that has earned this certificate? Well, we, we have a lot of causes, um, like we are doing uh, public health one and two, we are doing uh, laboratory technician, we are doing catering, we are doing um, tailoring, we are doing e addressing because I make sure that not to only make provision for those that have education, those that pass through their words, but I make sure I make provision for people who have a little education like having your becker or class six or let me say none of that, but just for you to become useful in the society, I create a provision for like catering, tailoring, you can do that without writing. Even if you want to take your measurement or you want to do your estimate true by the knowledge you have, you can do. So these are some of the things I create in Bane Institute. You mentioned two important areas, public health, lab team. Tell us the standard. Oh, the standard, I make sure that I employ trained and qualified lecturers. Like for the lab, I make sure I open laboratory, which I go all out to make sure I bring in my shoes so that the students will not only hear from the classroom, but they will come to the practical room to make sure that they use these machines to know the job proper. When we are talking about this public and especially in training nurses, the last time we one of the, the people from the nurses council we are talking that for you to uh, for you to be accredited, accredited to train nurses you have to get a clinic or hospital do you have such facility yes i have such facilities i have more than 27 beds to admit patients, which uh, the clinic is situated at 70 new sites on Wafu Wellington. I believe uh, the last I invite the media to go and cover all these things, so not just to pronounce it, but for people to see it. I believe uh, they caught it on camera. I have over 20 something bed and we have a lot of departments to make sure that the students will not only go and hear from the teachers but they will come and have their practical so i have a clinic so this comes operational cost so tell us how do you meet that okay my sister you know the grace of god is really powerful you know sometimes as i said it earlier it is really difficult Sometimes throughout the night I will not sleep. I will be stressing that the month is coming to an end to raise finance, to pay these people. I have more than 23 staffs, both the school department and the clinic department. But through the grace of God, I'm doing some little, little business and the little amount I'm demanding from the students. Uh, these are the way I raise funds to see how best I can pay my lecturers and to put many things in place to pay my insurance, license, a lot. And you want to assure of sustainability? Yes, and uh, um, I want to assure of support that uh, as I begin it with the grace of God by my side, without nobody around to help me like government or NGOs, donors outside there. And now I believe I've went too far and I will not get tired. I will keep on pushing. I am looking forward for the help from government or any NGO that have sympathy for the youth in Sierra Leone.
continue to stay with us. She is the Pesima proprietor of the Ghana Institute of Management, Science and Technology. Yes, Imani. Yes, we go to now we go to football. The finals of the fourth edition of the President Bill Trophy will hold on Sunday, 4th February 2024 at the GD Field Grafting. The theme of this year's competition is to push Kush away and engage in farming. Usman Kukufele is the chief organizer of the event and is with us in the studio. Good morning, Usman Kukufele. Um, good morning, good morning viewers. So your your theme your theme caught my attention. It's a push push away and engage in farming. So how does this football competition, how can you achieve such with football competition? Um, first of all, let me put the theme of this fourth edition of President Bill Trophy Street. It is Say No to Kush and Embark on Agriculture. So that is the theme, Say No to Kush and Embark on Agriculture. First of all, um, before coming to your question, let me tell you the rationale for organizing the President Bill Trophy. It is we want to acknowledge, we want to recognize, we want to give praises, accolades to the president because prior to now, football was not only moribund. Football was totally dead. Over 25 years, we didn't play the Nations Cup, the African Nations Cup. But the last Nations Cup Sierra Leone qualified and President Bio has made football attractive to young people, to everybody. And football also is useless. So we are organizing every year, we are organizing the President Bio Trophy to recognize him, to acknowledge him for his efforts in reviving soccer. Um, as you said clearly, we are using football as a tool to convey our message. Matthew, Kush is killing our brothers and sisters. In fact, I have succeeded in coining the meaning of Kush, whether by initial K-U-S-H. That is kill, urgently, seek, and hurtful. You know, Kush can kill instantaneously. Kush is so hurtful. We want to see how best we can use football to really talk to people that are addicted in taking Kush to avoid it instantaneously. At the same time, we want to really inspire young people and even the private sector to embark on agriculture. So the team is in tandem with the president's flagship project that is fit to and even the yes the youth empowerment scheme the yes um because if we eradicate kush if our brothers and sisters that are addicted in taking kush can avoid it trust me we can empower them so um eradicating kush is also part of the president flagship because part of the five big changes you have youth empowerment scheme and that of the first pillar as fit Sierra Leone that is say no to Kush and embark on agriculture. But on Sunday coming the 4th February 2024, we'll be having the grand finale. You know it's a French word. It emanated from a French word where the grand final on Sunday um the 4th February 2024. Um grafting community will be playing mountain community and our guest our distinguished Grand Chief Patron and the person who will be doing the former kickoff is Her Excellency Dr. Fatima Jabi Bill, who we are hosting this match at Grafting GDO Field for 10 years. Matthew, the competition is open to everybody. Musa Tumu, the country striker, Musa Nuba Kamara, is playing for Mountain, and you also have Alonso that is playing for Banta, the Premiership team. Kemo, Jim Perry is also playing for the Premiership team. You also have Robino, you have Kila Masakoy, former Bull Rangers players. Everybody is playing this competition. And the grand, um, the star prize for this competition 
is 30,000 euros new money. 30 million euros old money. Well, let us use some new money now because old money is not existing any longer. Um, 30,000 euros. Um, the winner, the champion, will take home 20,000 euros. And the runners up also will take home 10,000 euros. But this competition is so attractive. It has really encouraged a lot of young folks elderly people to be converging every now and then at the GDO field grafting and we are also using this competition to see how best we can fence we can fence the entire GDO and also make the pavilion I've started it and the HM the headman Harry Bangura also is doing extremely well we want to see how best because grafting GDO feed is a standard feed it has a standard measurement we want to see how best we can fence it and make a pavilion. Um, maybe in future, we want to be proactive. Premiership team or any other team will take that particular place as their home field. So we want to encourage people also to support. But I'll be remiss in my sacred duty if I fail to recognize our donor. Okay, before that. Our sponsor. Yes, before that, is it by this one-off match that the minds of youth could be diverted from Kush? Well, apparently, um, well, we are using this as a campaign. Matthew, I said earlier, Kush, um, football is a powerful tool you use to pass message. Um, King Ronaldo used football to resolve a whole conflict in Brazil. DJ Troba used football to resolve a whole conflict in Ivory Coast. You and other organizations are also using football to convey message far and wide. Well, we, we really want to broaden the horizon of young people who want to create that awareness that push is really bad. Push is devastating our society. To some extent, suffice to say, Kush is more, is more harmful than even the civil war. Because every day, every day, young people are dying. And it's because we are oblivious of the people that are dying. That is why people are not taking notes. So, because when there is war, you, you hear firing everywhere, you know. But for Kush people are dying, you are not taking notice. And Kush is not only limited in free time. Everywhere now, even the ladies, the female also, are now taking Kush. So it means you have to sustain this initiative? S certainly. Certainly. It continues unabated. We will continue to preach against Kush and we will continue to host President Bill Tukofi, even after his presidency. Okay, continue to stay with us. We shall talk to you again. Now we still have Angela Chalo from the Ministry of Transport. It's good that you created room for feedback during this introduction period. So one of the concerns is around the route. The corridor is still not clear to passengers. Yesterday, I could still remember some commotion around the, the lonely winking single corridor. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, I know even the first day uh, there was a challenge. The policy was not clear to even the enforcement unit. Okay, but what we did uh, on the first day, we called the police officers, the military personnel, and all the enforcement agencies in that room, where we discuss and uh, inform them clearly how the policy, policy is working. Uh, first of all, this idea of people saying we don't have alternative on the on, on the route, that is not correct. We have taxis are allowed on the iron corridor. Okay, so what we are saying during peak period, we have asked that all the uh, Puda Puda and Keke bikes use alternative routes and uh, you allow the buses to be moving the mass people from their places to their workplaces. The reason there is taxis on the corridor 
you can use the taxi. Well, you know, we have very limited taxis at the moment. So, um, they have been put away by the KKs. Exactly. So, they were removed from the corridor by the KKs. Okay? It is the same process, the same demand will bring them back on the corridor. You know, wherever you want to improve a, a, a public transport system, you have to get the mass transit system and the taxis to complement the mass transit system. Because the taxis will cater for those that will be moving from one point to the other. So at the end of the day, you are solving the problem for those that will be moving short distances that don't want to use the bus. So but there are alternative routes. So technically what you are saying is that you want to technically remove the keke from the corridor and bring restore the taxi system in the corridor so um that is not the case the point is we are bringing a modern transport system a recognized transport system that is all over the world uh, we want to reduce the number of vehicles on the corridor we we want to encourage all of us to leave our private vehicles and use the, the mass transit, the buses, to come to your offices. So it's not just these other vehicles. That's why they are allowed to use alternative routes along these uh, uh, corridors. You can use the alternative routes and feed in the buses. So at the end of the day, that's why they are the owners of these buses at the same time. So one, one misconception here is about the fees paid. Fears. I heard some people say that when you pay 10,000, it's for the whole day in the same corridor. <laughs> and so people are saying, okay, when you pay 10,000, it's just for one trip. So I want you to, to, to put to rest this. The whole idea is what was existing is just that we decided to maintain for the first phase. We are going to phase out as we, we do the fears. What was existing? When you take your Puda Puda or any form of uh, vehicle, you pay one, you, you pay flat rate, you go to the point that you are going. Okay? It's the same system. When you buy your ticket, it's just for one trip. That means you are moving from one point to the other, you just pay your 10 lion, you drop off where you want to drop off. When you are going back, you pay again your 10 lion. You go back. So for one trip is one uh, ten lion for one trip. So when you go back, you pay your ten lion. You go back. So the idea here is we are going to change as we go. We are going to bring a smart card system. We are in. You can have your card. You fill it up wherever you are. You can just enter the box and tap it in the in in the machine. Then you can just take your right while 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 we 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 are eager to see the you guys implement that one now i want to ask this question is it that if i live lonely and i want to come to abadino Wood and then i use the bus the ten thousand is is it still ten thousand um i will tell you when you are using your poda poda your taxi your keke when you if you are moving from st john you are going to, uh, let us say, to Kuto Road, you pay a flat rate. It's just the same system. We did not change anything. It's just the same system is, that is operating. You are paying a flat rate. Why is the government's price expensive than the, the, the others? Uh, it is not expensive than the others. I will tell you, I always take uh, keke, I take poda poda and taxis. When you take, well, I, I'm living presently at Grafton, when you take a vehicle at uh, uh, Jui, first of all, the driver, if you are not going with two-way, they will not take you on board. Most of them, when it's rush hours, they will ask you two-way or they stop you at some point that you have to pay an order fee. So before you reach at your final destination. Sometimes people pay more than three times before ever they reach to their final destination. So our fears are not expensive. Mind you, the operations of these buses is completely different from other operations. The operations of these buses, we are saying buses are going to be moving based on predetermined time. Whether you have one person in the bus, you the bus is going to move. Let me tell you, during this test run, what we, we the, the fuel that we bought is more than 300 million 
just for us to do this test room. The operations of the buses is very expensive. And what we, are, we, we, we have set up is that uh, we are going to have a maintenance unit that is going to be uh, also going to be uh, managed and operated within the system. Then the fear collectors are there. That is a, a private company that is going to be collecting fears. And the operators, including the, the, the authority, we don't want to burden the government on this. We want all the system to be operated by themselves. We don't want the government to be subsidizing too much on this so that uh, we can lose some of the burdens from government. Okay, continue. M many thanks to you, Engineer Cheno. We shall bring you more conversation on the introduction of this worker fine buses as you evaluate this test run and concerns that have emanated. Thank you very much for being on the show. We still have proprietors here, Pesima. What's your next step after this accreditation? Uh, my next step after this accreditation, because I have a large crowd, which I am believing God for the building, which I have started now, and uh, I am believing God for the, uh, the complete of the building. And uh, I want to reassure all my students out there to make sure that they call upon others that are sitting home, let them come on board. Those that say that ah, I am going back because the school is not accredited. Now that the school is accredited, I just want to inform all students to come on board. And I want to send this message to all my past students to Bane Institute. And uh, they are my born in Kano students. I believe they need to come back because they spend time with us without having documents. Now, let them come and sit. Why I have the perseverance is for our sisters and brother to stop taking kush. Because if they are sitting home laggardly, they will, they will become frustrated. And the next idea is what? Let me smoke kush and rest. Okay. okay. Many thanks, Yeah, Pesima, to Kaitres Bane Institute. Where we go over again to Osman Kukufele. Emmanuel, you see, Kukufele has clouded himself with medals, you know. <laughs> <laughs>